Hello. Hello, how are you? Sorry, we've had a break for a couple of weeks, haven't we? Boat safety. It's, it's the first one and it's wrecked my head. So <laughs> I am sorry. My fault. Stress, stress, stress while trying to get a few things done. So I apologise. Well, as you can see, it's a little bit dark here and a little bit shiny out there. So if I do that, you see the better side of me. <laughs> what have we got this week? So we will do a video on the boat safety certificate, what it entailed and how it affected our life. And really, really, to be honest, it's not that hard if you keep on top of it. And yes, we've kept on top of it. We've had a few changes. We also had, had to add a few things in, uh, like a gas bubble tester, mm. and that was where the stress was, the gas. But enough of that. Yes, that's another, another week. All about this week. I think it's a record breakout. Yes, 37 locks, three sets coming through and out of Birmingham. Oh, pull the first pint. Yes, we then had a break to Cornwall, so we did a bit of video whilst we were down there. We've got really exciting news of a new family member, so keep watching and you'll meet him halfway through the video. Oh, well, there you go, you see. Spoils it all. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler <laughs> alert. And we anyway. went to Healy Cider Farm, which ties in really well with some of the other areas we visited on the canals recently. In that case, best I had this half of the face, see the better side on both sides, and then we'll catch you on the other side. And at the end, I'm out to practice, all right. Um, <laughs> if it isn't doing that with the little red button top, then it's push the button, ring the bell. It's free to you and Tash, Steve over there on Marpe, and everybody else in the world. Please share us and press the like button and subscribe. See ya. Morning. So, how do you fancy this? Can you hear it in a city centre? What a beautiful view there is behind. And if we turn around and see what we mean. How beautiful is that? City centre canaling, even with your own little garden. <laughs> I think this might be one of our winter moorings. Don't tell everybody, otherwise they'll all want to jump on board <laughs> before we get there. Come cruising with us today. We've got about 30... 37 locks, Mammoth Day. Boom! Let's see whether we can go and get them. Here we are, first sight of Birmingham City Centre on the boat again this year. Just heading into the water point by the mailbox. We did cover it on one of our videos last year, but if you haven't seen that one, these hatches on the bridges in the Birmingham area were used for the fire trucks to refill their tanks with water. So I don't believe the hatches are used anymore, but the fire trucks do still fill up from the canals. I did see one on one of the housing areas in Tipton last year on canal side filling their tanks up. Mile markers are quite detailed around here with several different place names on them. We've just come under Bridge 88. Water points on port side here, but there is someone on it. But there are more water points on the way, so we'll keep going for now. We've got the mailbox here on our starboard side, and we're going to make a left hand turn down into Gas Street Basin. Very quiet Monday morning. The Birmingham Library there on our starboard side. The gold round section on the top is the Shakespeare Library that we did go to when we were here last year. It is free entry, it's well worth a visit. It's got all of his published works in it. Really interesting to go and have a look at. And the library itself is an amazing building with just so many millions of books lining the walls up through the central stairwell, isn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not stopping at Gas Street at the moment. We're just passing through to go down through Farmer's Locks, but we will be back after the festival's done. I'm gonna have a go at trading just here on our port side, see what it's like. I think it is better here than it is outside Lego land. It's not one we've done before, so we'll give it a go. We don't know if we don't try. It's funny what you notice when you get into a Birmingham city centre and the, 
how clear the water's not. Yes, I said not. It, it gets back to black. We've only come up, what, two, three mile, isn't it? From Kings Norton Junction and the, the canal, when you turn it over to get into the side, is thick, rich black from all the decomposition of stuff that's in the canal. It's a, it's a shame, really, but it all comes from the coal and the ashes and all the silt and that that everybody's a turn around and add. Tashi stood next to me, see? That's why I was looking that way. So we're on the top of Farmer's Locks. We've stopped at the water point. We've actually got it on it, on it this time um, without having too much trouble with anybody. Because um, these are a 30 minute more water before we go down the locks. Uh, it's a flight of 13, Farmer's Locks. And then we've got a two, three minute cruise down to Aston Lock, if it's that. Um, from the bottom lock and then we've got another I think it's another 12 off the top of my head down the bottom of there go past another water point we turn left underneath the M6 and the M5 junctions spaghetti junctions and then we'll go up Perry Bar locks um, which has about another 12 taking us up towards the bushel we've got about 37 locks so we're at the head of it I've just put the kettle on, we'll have one of them before we turn around and set off while the water's filling and then we can crack on. Long busy day. So we're down most of the flight of locks down here at Farmer's Bridge. And with the middle boat, we've got one coming up, us going down. We've been following the boat builders all the way down. And there's one coming down behind us. It's going to be a nifty piece of work, this one. Farmer's locks are done. And we now start coming down. Aston Lock, a flight of about 13. Tasha's just having her dinner while moving, so I'll start this while she eats. And uh, the wind's just caught her. So she'll be there and sorted. Another flight of 13, I think. So we're at the end of the Anston flight. Just Not one, quite. one lot to, <laughs> one to go, go after this one. That'll be 20... 24 so far. so far today. With another 13 to go. Um, yes, we're at <laughs> Thimble Mill Lock Bridge. Bet you can't guess what was made in the location of here. Hmm, thimbles. You don't see many of them in the shops these days, do you? people don't darn or so so hey never mind one to go we'll see you at the bottom when we get the motorways in a So he's half French bulldog and half English bulldog and he's absolutely 
absolutely gorgeous and we're really looking forward to introducing him to boat life when he next comes up to us. We're having a few days break in Cornwall. We've had to come to Healy Cider Farm but it also links back to places we've visited already this year because it's part of the Healy motoring family as well and Healy's were built in West Brom. So Donald Healy was originally technical director of Triumph in Coventry where they built the supercharged Triumph Dolomite and there was also production in Warwick, both places we've been to recently. And these cars are stunning. And there's the boat. And of course we've got little man with this orchard in Cornwall. They've got an impressive 20 acres with over 3,000 trees and this is where the apples get bought in ready for processing into cider. There's three bays and each bay can hold up to 52 tonnes which is 330,000 apples per bay. These are the apple squashing presses. So this one line can bottle up to 5,250 bottles per hour. That's one hell of a lot of bottles. And although it's Sunday, they are working and they've got the bottling plant working today. Just in the middle of the picture there is the boxing of the bottles. On a very different scale to today's production, this is the original apple press. This actual press here is a 16th century one, which is the oldest one that they've got on display. And it comes from Hereford and it's got a sandstone press bed. And the solid oak head block weighs half a tonne. They used to use goose fat to lubricate the thread. Here's one of the original granite presses. Got to see on the right hand side where the horse or the man would have pulled it around. But then as things were modernised gradually and they started using wooden press, it was lighter and easier to use. But unfortunately it did soak up a lot of the juice. So they did start soaking them in the local pond at night. But that was very tedious. So then eventually Granite stone mills were used up until the 18th century and then they swapped to these wooden scratters in the 18th century and it had blades inside similar to an old lawnmower that used to pulp the apples. So Tash has never pulled a pint. So here you go. There we go, lighting's a bit better now for the exit. There you go. Oh my shock horror, that's what we look like. <laughs> mm. Anyway, as you can see, we're at the most photographed locks in the country. Brash locks. We're on the staff some more step. Well, enough for that one. But what did you think of the video? Isn't Hennessy just absolutely edible? To die for. He's gorgeous. We nearly brought his sister home. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know us. If you know us, we need to go for the roads. We're on marathon training now. More about that in the next few weeks, I think. Yeah, so next week's video, we'll try and do some boat safety certificate information, won't we? Oh, oh no. Hopefully, that'll be helpful to some of you. Oh no. <laughs> no. Anyway. Thank you to all our subscribers and our followers. We really do appreciate it and all the support. Don't forget, share us with your friends as well. Hop us over the channel. Push the button, ring the bell. It's free to you and us and everybody else. But also, if you want us to do something, i.e. show you a little bit about boating life, then just get in touch. Nice to hear from you. And we'll love to turn around and help you enjoy and learn about the canals. Have See a good you. week. See Enjoy. you next week.